You want to experience comic culture and sales. Streaming live daily to Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. everybody glad you're with us uh this is just me uh, we sort of are in like a transitional period here at, Com- at dynamite and uh probably just going to be me tonight uh we'll talk about some stuff i'll try to find some books to kind of you know hopefully get you guys to buy i see eddie with us i see a few other people with us uh changes had to be made um yeah i am in the big chair uh i don't want to get into it too much we'll just say that you know, maybe, maybe not on Robbie. That'll have to be a last-minute game decision make. But uh, everybody else is sort of, you know, yeah. I was waiting for somebody to get it. Hey, John, what day is it? <laughs> it's April ah, Fool's Day. Uh, Rex is not with us tonight, unfortunately. Not feeling that I'm great. Here. But uh, Robbie's you know, coming. Robbie's coming. Uh, you know, Alex is here. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, Mitch, sit in this chair. I'm uncomfortable right, in this right, chair. Right, That's yeah, not you, my get, chair. you get your chair. That's uh, not my chair. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I know, right, Preston? Preston, go, yeah, go sneak. Preston wants to sneak in Nick's office. I'll tell you right now, if Nick was off, the the, the giveaway would be somewhat different. Let's say hello to people in the chat with Eddie. What's up, Eddie? What's going on? CIB, we've got Triple B's here. Um, CJ Design is here. Shout out to Sheldon Walsh for being here. basement, man. Preston's here. Robbie's in the chat. Robbie needs to be here once he gets his link. Uh, Lorena is here. Uh, shout out to Lorena. Bar Lord too. Bar What's Lord? up, Bar Lord? Bar Lord yeah. Mr. Nope's oh. here also. Guys, we're just scrolling up. Eddie, I said Eddie. <laughs> uh, yeah, so boom, we're here. Mr. Easy, go lucky. Boom, yeah, boom, right, boom. Eddie? That was uh, the special Just John episode. I'll tell you right now, if there's an ever Just John episode, it's going to be from Nick's office. Robbie's with us, and the deals will be somewhat even more outrageous than they are now if it's ever just John episode. It'll just be me giving Nick stuff away. That would be who fun. has a dollar? Who wants this? <laughs> Hello, Robbie. How Hello. Doing, How are y'all all doing? Wonderful. Have you recovered from uh, your, your movie sort of I, – I understand you had to watch a movie that was not that terrific. Bro, not only that. So I have watched <laughs> – have you ever seen the movie Possession with Sam Neill from like 81? Yes. Okay. You know that that is a very emotionally exhausting film. So I watched that night one. Night two, watched 2019's Cats. Night three, watched the new Roadhouse. I'm ready for something different. <laughs> it's been a uh, rough one. I was following this on Facebook and I was almost going to say, PCP, is this like a call for help, man? Are you, are, are you guys sort of, you know... Uh, reaching out saying please help us or whatever but um i you know what i almost messaged you robbie i watched a movie it's one of those movies where it's a few friends and a few beers and a few pizzas i think we've had this conversation before uh it's 1 30 in the morning we put on something called ghost watch on shutter i don't know if you've seen it before it's from 1992 and i gotta tell you Maybe it's the beer and pizza. Maybe it's the late hour. But this thing was an entertaining 95 minutes. Um, it's Ghost sort watch, of like, you say, right? It's like a live BBC studio show where they're covering a haunted house. And we've all seen this movie before, right? Oh, the house is really haunted. And it was just... it. The description was... Made for 30 bucks on a Sunday afternoon. The description, and we were just like, this is BBC. No, this is going to be terrible. I'm like, come on, man. Let's put it on. We can't agree on anything. We put this thing on 15 minutes into it. We were laughing. Like, it, I don't think they wanted it to be funny. But I'll tell you right now, if you ever want to kind of see something, you know what I mean, a little bit different, seeing as how you're seeing stuff like Cats from 2019. What's up, Kenneth? 
he was sort of at the bottom of the barrel. So I'm like, well, if you're already down there, can we go lower? Check out Ghost Watch. Well, it's not like I chose to watch it. Like what happened was four <laughs> years ago, we made a promise that we would cover it and then we never did. So we're honoring that promise tonight, finally. Figure what better show for April 1st? I, res I respect the. That makes uh, sense. I, I respect the commitment. Um, uh, I, I had a niece over, and she's a big Cats fan. She's seen the play a bunch of times. And I tried to tell her there's a big difference between plays and movies. Yeah. Traditionally, plays don't trans, you know, translate real well into movies, especially this one, because everyone I knew had seen it was like, this is awful. Well, I'm looking forward to Robbie's review very soon. So. I know what Robbie's review is going to be. Oh, it, it should be a very, very fun conversation, regardless. Yes. So it'll be a fun episode. We'll put it that way. I don't know about the movie, the cinema content, the true. comedy content will probably be real high. <laughs> well, let's start off with what we always start off with with some comic books. And if you guys don't know, when you type claim in, claiming is great. That allows us to make sure that we know that you got the claim. But that's only part of it. There's going to be a link. And when you claim something, fill the link out because we need your information. We don't want to get Amy mad. We like Amy. Oh, yeah, please don't. Uh, it's not a joke, not a fool, no fooling. April Fool's Day or not, fill out the link. TJ so. James, we'll get this out of the way real quick. Uh, so far, I've seen Ghostbusters Frozen Empire eight times. I love that movie. It's I, I, People like it. They don't like it. To me, I can't think of a better way to kill two hours in the afternoon. My wife is doing stuff. Maybe she's at her job. This, that's happening. I go over, you know, I grab myself a lemonade. I sit down. Uh, I, 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 you know, movies like that make me smile. I, it's not even like a good, bad, the friend, you know, people, oh, the franchise should be retired. If we're going to start retiring franchises, I can think a lot of them to get to before Ghostbusters. That's all I'm going to say. Fast and uh, Furious, Transformers. <laughs> wait, 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 what, was the, what was the first one you said? Fast it's and just, Furious, maybe? That's, that, that, that's the first one I thought of when you said that. At their age, they're not driving real fast. And how furious can they be? They're all fat millionaires now. Listen, what are you furious about? How, how about how about a slow, easy Sunday drive? I want to see that movie. <laughs> I'll tell you, and I know that this is never going to happen because of the reality of Hollywood and these types of things. I would really have a lot of respect for a franchise. And I don't care who the performer is. He or she, the central figure, dies at the end of like the, the trilogy. I think they tried to do that with John Wick, but I don't think anybody really believed John Wick is dead. Or well, they've least... already announced they're doing another John Wick movie, right? Yeah. They've already announced I... that he's not dead. And you're like, what? How, well, how did he saying... survive that? Well, they did that with Bond. <laughs> well, so. I saw they were doing a First, they said they were doing a movie in the John Wick universe. And I'm like, well, okay. Uh, the universe still exists. And then it just, a few days later, was, no, it's just another John Wick movie. Like Robbie said, he's not dead. And I'm like... Wait, what? He's not dead. Well, wait a minute. That that's sort of it. Like you know, you're really totally undercutting, like the end of John Wick Four, which was supposed to have a little bit of, you know, emotional. John stuff. Wick Five, weekend at John Wick's. Well, you know what? If they do something cool, something crossover, like Rachel Ghoul throws him in like the Lazarus wait, Pit. You don't want to see John Wick like this? Board. I'm John Wick. <laughs> You know, if jo if John Wick says Beetlejuice three times and he gets brought back to life, I'm fine with that. If there's no sort of, if it's just yeah. like, oh, they missed, he's okay. I know he got shot 38 times, but he's all right. Um, where were we? Uh, there are no April Fool's claims. These are only real claims here. And speaking of claims, let's start with the Dynamite 10 Pack Reader Set, which is what we have every week, which is an MSRP of $40. These are 10 random Dynamite books for 50 cents each. These are completely random. 10-pack reader set. Uh, you get 10 books, 50, cent, 50 cents each. 10 random Dynamite books. You don't want to miss out if you want a sampling of great Dynamite titles. Well, this is a chance we talked about this before, right? Maybe some people miss Sweeties, you know? Maybe we had Jennifer Blood come out at a time where there was like an army of darkness bonanza, right? I get it. People have a finite budget for comics. Mm -hmm. This is a chance for you to be like, you know what? I wanted to get this book, but it wasn't in the budget. This is a chance for you to get it about as cheap as you're yeah. ever going to see it, right? 50 cents a book. I mean, they're random, but they're definitely a good 
smattering. Well, somebody said it. I guess it was maybe a year ago somebody said it. They got the Reader 10 pack and they got like Draculina 3. Right, but they just love the book. Oh, we pull random books. I mean, they're... so they went back and they got the rest of the thing, and of course, you know, I, I think there are even some incentives in there. Also, so, somebody uh, asked me, "Were we going to have Draculina again?" I'm like, "We can always put Draculina in these books too." Well, it's one of these things where I'm like, I, I never like to say this, right? When we first started doing the show, I would get people that would be like, "What? Vampirella is done?" And I'm like. No, Vampirella's not done. It's not the final issue. I'm telling you, Vampirella will be back. I'm telling you, there'll be more Red Sonya, even if this story. You know he's I mean? completed so many runs buying ten packs. Well, listen, we got the Dynamite books for you. But if you don't, if you want some non-Dynamite books, we've got the Dynamic Forces grab bag. Starting with me dropping oh, yeah. my pen. How about the three pack, which is again, these are all high grade books from the '90s. There are some '80s. Some two thousand early two thousands, but these are definitely brand new grab bags. A majority will actually be Marvel books, but there is definitely going to be some DC and some indie. We've got three books for five dollars. Again, these are all completely random. These are fun little nineties uh, uh, fun right there. Um, Oh yeah, yeah, we we gave Eddie a ten pack of horror once. Yeah, if you guys want something, we can try to make it happen. Yeah, I mean we can't. I mean I'm not going to put it in writing, guarantee it. But if somebody is looking for a horror I mean, ten we're, pack, we're, or... we're not going to give you the, a full run of a series for fifty cents a book. You know, we still want to make it competitive, but we're definitely going to give you books that make you want to say, "Wow, these are dynamite!" I want to buy another pack. So, cool. but, somebody asked me once about books that I like. Some of the older stuff. So I so I threw a bunch of Project Superpowers in there. You know what I mean? And you know, I was really glad. I forget who it was, but they were like, Wow, this is really good. I'm like, Yeah, this is there's a long history with Dynamite Comics and Project Superpowers. There's, Dynamite is celebrating its 20th year this year. So there's 20 years of books. Um we also have the Dynamic Forces seven pack right here for ten dollars. Ten dollars here gets you seven random books. You know, you could get look at that aliens world, that alien worlds book right there. Some Conan. Oh, it's just these are just random examples of a real path that was photographed. It's just an example. So lots of mystery here. If you guys just want some fun books to read, Alien Worlds is that blast from yeah. the past. If you're like an '80s comic fan, you see something like Alien Worlds that that puts a smile. I, mean, I put these together myself, so I get, make sure that you guys have a good we'll set. But if you want to go at the very top, we've got the 15-pack, the grab bag 15-pack, and that is $20, 15 books for $20, a good sampling of titles, lots of fun things to read, lots of good stories right there. Again, 15 books for $20. I'll tell you, that particular version of the Squadron Supreme that's up there, I could see someone reading that and then going out and getting it. If I remember correctly, that's like a Joe Straczynski version. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's J. I, Michael Straczynski. It was, wasn't it for like Marvel Max originally? Am I misremembering that? It was. And then they, they even crossed over with the Ultimate Universe at the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, these packs are supposed to be PG packs. Uh, so I don't know if that is an actual Max book, but it, uh, like, like, I'm not putting a Max book in here because I don't know what the target audience yeah, is. It's going to get these packs. I, well, kind of one of the reasons I brought that up is most of the Mac books, Max books are okay. Yeah. Occasionally. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if they're all audiences. I'll put it that way. I don't know if Max books are for all audiences. I really love them. The, the next set usually is for all audiences. And this is the X-Men 20 pack. A dollar a book for this stuff. Celebrate X-Men 97 releasing and get 20 X-Men books. I mean, look at all those titles right there. I mean, there's X-Men Adventures, classic X-Men, Uncanny, Jim Lee, 90s X-Men. You got Kitty Pryde and Wolverine. I mean, there's a lot. Extreme X-Men. Well, you basically Ultimate. got like four-ish decades of X-Men in that, in that pack. Uh, um, covering, I think. We got 80s, 90s, and, 2000s, uh, and 2010s, right? Well, no. Uh, there's not going to be any 2010s, but you will get 70s and 60s stories because classic X-Men oh, does reprint. 
um, some original stories. So this is also real timely because if you guys have been following the news out of WonderCon or maybe people who've gone to WonderCon know, uh, you know, the X Men have almost taken that over. They've got one panel after another. Uh, they had a standing room only panel with uh, Gail Simone and oh my god, I forget who's actually drawing the book now, but they were sort of, you know, they just sort of took over the big room and were, you know. You know, just letting everybody know what was coming for the X Men. I mean, we're, we're about to get into X Men everywhere in the next couple of years. Yeah, I think they've decided both at the comic level and to a certain extent at the movie level. You know, I think we're going to be getting mutants in the the MCU. I mean, we've got the X Men ninety seven cartoon. I mean, Marvel. In case you guys don't know, Marvel literally had a decree that there is basically no X Men stuff for a while uh, because because they didn't they wanted to focus on inhuman stuff. And so they basically – there wasn't a lot of X-Men titles for a little bit um, because they also didn't have the movie rights. I hate to say it like this, but I think the whole Inhumans experiment, I don't know – Oh, it failed. People, it's not, it was not the success they hoped it was. I mean, look, I mean you, can put, you can use the Inhumans experiment with one hero. And, Robbie, I think you agree with this. Kamala Khan, she was an Inhuman until they were like, actually, no, we want her to be a mutant. She should have been a mutant. She is a mutant. Yeah, and they're like, mutant. never mind. Never mind. Never she's mind. a mutant. Just kidding. Da -dun. I mean, I, I'm all for well, the original Inhumans. I think that's the case of where Disney plus Miss Marvel gets it right. She's just got bracelets. She's a kid with bracelets. Let's not get too much into stepping on story, backstepping on story. You know what I mean? They never worried about that. Too much. Well, the big I mean, thing with the Inhumans is, is the audience knew right that this wasn't an organic story that they were trying to tell they were trying to pretty much force inhumans into the mutants role and yep. and everybody could pick that pick up on that and that's why it never really worked never went anywhere and then they did that inhuman series on on TV that just was universally panned and criticized well, though. Yeah, yeah, so yeah but even, even before that they had uh inhumans in Agent of Shield and they did uh, lots of stuff with the Terrigenist. Like, I was yeah, but that's fine. It's just once they started trying to really push them into the place yeah. of the mutants, like in the comics, we could all see what was going on there. I love the Inhumans. Like I'm a big oh. Fantastic Four Kirby fan. I love the Inhumans. But... I was just gonna say you get both the Eternals and the Inhumans. Essentially, they're kind of part of Kirby's whole ancient astronaut belief system, right? There's really not that much difference. If you want to call it third world from DC, that's fine too. But they're it's almost like they're best used in small doses. You can't use them as like the the kind of like the the framework for the entire universe. They're the supporting character. They're not the lead yeah, character. And it's always great. They show up. And even back in the day, things were kind of this, this, that, this. And then all of a sudden, Black Bolt shows up. And you're like, oh, playtime's over. Yeah, you know what but I mean. But I will say this: if you want to read some great Inhumans, that's not Jack Kirby. Check out the Inhuman series by Paul Jenkins and Jay Lee, because that's I knew really he was going to talk about that. That's uh, it's different, and I didn't expect to like it because I'm sort of like a Kirby purist when it comes to Kirby stuff. But a friend told me just check it out, just check it out. By like the second or third issue, I'm totally invested. I'm all on board. Now I'm telling people, you've got to read this, man. You've got when to. I was when I was having dinner with Jay Lee, one of the questions I asked him is like, what's like the book you're most proud of? What's your favorite? And he said Inhumans, 100%. Or no, he said Fantastic Four, 1, 2, 3, 4. But right behind that was Inhumans. I mean, when, the, when a creator goes on record like that, even if it's like a that. casual conversation... You kind of you know it means something to them, which is very cool. So buy in humans. Um, do we have Jay Lee stuff? Uh, we do actually. That was the segue. Uh, but not yet. Uh, we have one more. Grab, we have the grab bag combo. The grab bag combo. This is for all three grab bag, all four grab bags. The three pack, seven pack, fifteen pack, and the X Men twenty pack. That is forty five books for sixty dollars. At this point, you're almost going to start selling small, like short books, right? Like short, uh, yeah, like short boxes. Yeah, buy a short box to X Men. We're going to start doing that. Um, Some guy used to have a Twitter account, and it was like the Long Box Graveyard or something. And he was just buying long boxes, like sight unseen, and then selling the books on Twitter. I don't know if he still has his account. Or that, well, not. That's what comic service Newcadia does. They buy wholesale. They buy books wholesale, uh, and at long box, and they list all dollar books of consignment. 
And so if you go to Newcadia, they can have they have every week or every month they drop a book price. But it's all like lower issues. There's no crazy keys. Everybody is at a different stage in their collecting, right? There's people that are almost done. There's people that are buying and selling. Uh, what do Robbie say? There are people that are using the hobby to fund fund the hobby, so to speak. You know what I mean? Everybody's at different levels. You know what I mean? Now there's like real specific books I'm looking yeah. for. Um. So uh, let's. We have one book that was new last week. So let's show this new book this week. Uh, last week's Dynamite book, which is Red Sonia number nine. So we're going to show an image of all the covers together, and we're going to go one by one and see if anybody wants a single cover. So there, this is last week's Red Sonia nine. So if anybody wants any of these individual issues, claim with the letter. Claim with the letter. These are four dollars each, three ninety nine, starting on the left. We have cover A, Lucio Perillo. Cover A is Lucio Perillo. Cover B is Bjorn Berens. B like in the snow, yeah, man. Bjorn Berens. That's a very cool cover. Now, I don't know what, what it is about this week, but a lot of backsides this week. C is Lindsner. Joseph Michael Lindsner for ish, cover C in the middle. That's actually kind of a rare. Lindsner, yeah. Lindsner, it's always a front. Always a front. Yeah, I mean. Um, cover D is Mel Ruby with the horse right there. And cover E is the cosplay. Gracie the, Gracie cosplay. the cosplay last. Cover price is $3.99 on any of these books. So if anybody missed out on this, the latest issue of Red Sonia number nine, just claim with the letter and we'll make sure you get the latest issue of Red Sonia, which came out, issue number nine, Torin Grombeck series right there. Uh, yes, it is fantastic. So, if you guys, anybody wants Red Sonia 9, we got this one brand new right here. Uh, and if you want... Torn Grombeck talked about this before the series started, right? There's a certain expectation for Red Sonia. When you deviate from that expectation, you're rolling the dice. Yeah. Like, last year we had Red Sonia in the role of, like, mother, caregiver sort of thing. And some people really dug it, and I think other people were not 100% sure... You know, there's a lot of Red Sonia fans. They just want to see people's heads chopped off. Yeah. Well, the listen. monster, the wizard, right? And I think, once again, she sort of tried to give us something a little bit different. But I think in this case, this seems to be much more successful. There's a little bit if, if it for everything. But we got Red Sonia 9 here. If anybody wants, think about it. And we got a break coming up, so you can think about it over the break. Guys, we'll see you in a couple minutes. Don't go anywhere. By this time in our journey, we had been on the trail of a very elusive creature for about 96 hours. But all the hard work is about to pay off. Oh, crikey, there she is. Oh, by the markings, I'd say this one's at least a 9.8. Oh, she's a real beauty. A true mint copy. Oh, this one will make a fine slab on anyone's display wall. Oh, she's a feisty one, though. Look, oh, look out, look out. Mint Hunter Comics is the place to find that mint comic you've been searching for. Mint Hunter Comics, Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, part of the experience. There's something for every imagination at your local comic shop. Visit ComicShopLocator.com to find a store near you.
Welcome back. We are back, everybody. Um, Robbie is As here. Bill, I got you. Jay, throw uh, the Red Sonia. Guys, just to sh uh, up one more time. Guys, again, this is Red Sonia Volume 6, Number 9. This is all the covers. Again, A is Perio. B is Berenz. C is Linsner. D is Mel Ruby. And E is Gracie, the cosplay last cosplay cover. Each the Mel Ruby cover has almost like a pulp novel. It, it, it feels it, like Hellboy. It? it has like a Hellboy. Yeah, 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 for sure. It has a make Magnolia feel almost. Um, again, guys, these are all these covers are individual, three ninety nine each. If you guys want a, a, a smattering, a sampling, a smorgasbord, a combination, a buffet, whatever you want, we're here. I talked to Gracie the cosplayer a lot on social media. Was that was that the face she made when you were trying to talk to her? No, she was telling me she's like the day we did this shoot. She's like, it was freezing out there. She, because I was like, I think you're in the cover with like a winter. She's thing. also in the water, where uh, it's probably cold. I, I've talked to a few cosplayers, and the thing they dislike is getting in the water. Yeah. Because the first time they get in the water, it's fine. The fifth time, the photographer says, "Hey, you got to get back in the water, and it's three in the afternoon." Like no, uh, it, it starts to get chilly. Plus, these girls are all, you know, they were next to nothing in the water, man. I'm, I was just like, yeah, no, no, no. All right, so guys, that is right here. Uh, what do I do? Oh, I'm covered. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. I, I went like this. Oh, but it, it, it was reversed. But, gotcha. Okay. Because she was like this. She was holding it up. So oh, going, got you, man. <laughs> there you go. Um, so that is Red Sonia number nine. Is there a deal if they buy all the covers or something? Unfortunately, there is not. But we keep it. We keep everything at cover price. So the publisher in here. So the so the sets are all cover price. Hey Lyle. Hey Lyle. So um, we don't upcharge on anything. We are the publisher, so we keep them at cover price regardless. So we're gonna move on to some sketches. So we got some great sketches, including some brand new ones that I found at Rex's desk. So let's start with. <laughs> Detective Con. Let me go over to Mariano's desk and see what we can find. <laughs> no, be a very different Mariano set. gave him the racks. They were ready to be used. So oh, okay. I want to okay. make sure we use them. So, Robbie, we're starting with Detective Comics 140, which is the first Riddler. And this is Jessica a Batman Ford. cover sketch, or at least if you like Batman's face close up. Guys, Jessica Court sketch right here. This one is $89.99. We only have one. Look this at the one's detail. Sharp. This one's yeah, sharp. It's got some like uh, it's got some like Jorge Jimenez energy to it or something. Right? That's, look at the detail Jessica in his Court, eyes. You know, like we talked about this before. Jessica Court is one of those people that we're kind of offering the covers for now. That the work is just oh, she's it, great. It, it, it kind of speaks for itself. Plus, I love the fact the blank they use. I love the fact that there's all this sort of energy in the lower half of the cover, and the upper half of the cover is like 1959. Oh yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? It's sort of a neat kind of. I, I yeah, I like this a lot. I mean, I'm not even the biggest Batman fan, but I love this cover. That yellow really works on it too. I mean, part of the cool things that they that that DC is doing with their facsimiles, that Marvel well, actually Marvel Marvel hasn't had any facsimiles in uh, in about six months or so. Well, sorry, let me phrase. Marvel has their Secret War stuff. At um, Preston, that's also a great observation. Preston said it looks like she could have been doing an old EC Comics cover there. Uh, yeah, that's exactly the kind of stuff you used to get on old EC, yeah. huh? like the grimmest face. Like I mean, Marvel all is, doesn't do it a lot as much as DC does. But um, DC is doing it more and more. They're keeping the blanks with the old trade dress from the new facsimiles. So, Showcase 22 was on FMC this past weekend, which is the first Greenland or first Hal Jordan. And of course, that's getting a blank. So, do I want a copy of a Green Lantern comic that has the first appearance title on it? Absolutely. So, I wrote a bunch of those, but that's really cool because you do have the old trade dress, you do have the old styles, and the yellow obviously makes it a little bit difficult for artists to have to they have to adjust their color palette because the background is now yellow. But if you know comic books, you know Golden Age and Silver Age books, you know that one color covers, one tone cover backgrounds were very popular, and they made books really stand out. I mean, the best Superman covers are the ones where it's a yellow background and just Superman on the cover, some of those. you know, Books like this are thirty dollars or $40,000, where it's literally Superman holding a bomb and asking you to buy war bombs. 
You know what I mean? And it's, you know, by today's standards, that's not, that's the cover of a memo pad. I mean, there, there really <laughs> aren't any like classic style covers where it's a blank or it's a full colored background with a classic image. So this is Batman's face and nose. If you want to be up close intimate with Batman, here's your book. Jessica Court here for $90 on this one. All books come with COA, of course. Nice. I mean, that's um, just, like I said, her work is, it continues to sort of, you know, she doesn't miss, as, yep. a, as the phrase goes. I mean, I don't, everything I've seen from her, you know, it, it's worth it for Mariano to crush the dreams of almost everyone to find Jessica Court. Absolutely. Um, moving <laughs> on to this, the next book, that you, you, you don't have to wake up super early to get this. We have this book at all hours, not just the dawn of DC. Uh, Primer, see number one. That. This is a dawn of DC Primer number one with a Superman sketch, 50s style Superman. Look at that S on his logo. The hand has got a Jack Kirby energy. Joe Del Beato, Mario Nicieza. He's playing rock, paper, scissors with himself. Right. Um, this one is $69.99 for this one. Joe Del Beato, Mariano Nicieza. This is Dawn of DC Primer, special edition with Superman cover sketch. Look at the boots, too. There's very much like a, almost like a golden age energy to oh, the yeah. boots, right? Uh, moving on to Batman Urban Legends, number one. We've got a Nightwing sketch. By Tony Scott. I guess Tony Scott's kind of channeling a little bit of Frank Miller here. Maybe? Oh, I mean, it, he's in the shadows. <laughs> nice logo in the back. This one is $70 for Batman Urban Legends with the Nightwing sketch. Uh, Nightwing. This is like Nightwing by way of Daredevil, right? This looks almost it's like a Daredevil type pose you would get. Yeah. I, I was going to say, if you're a Nightwing fan and you've been waiting for something, you know what I mean? Like your, your moment is... Here's here. your book. Come on, guys. Here's uh, your book. If, if, no, I was going to say, uh, if, if you'd like Dick Grayson, that's right there on, on, on your screen right there. It can be yours. In fact, if you turn it upside down, then the book's upside down. Moving on to nice. Star Wars Book of the Week. We've got Star Wars Vader Down, number one, with Princess Leia. But not just any Princess Leia. That is what's called Hut Slayer Leia. Hut Slayer Leia. This is by Dan Nylinger. This one is $49.99. You heard that right. Special price, $49.99. You get the old style slave layup. New name is Hut Slayer Leia. Right here for fifty dollars. Dan Nylinger sketch right here. Plus, yeah, Vader Jay, Down is, is an excellent story. Like if you're a Star oh, Wars God. fan and you've never read Vader Down, you really should. One hundred percent. It probably has the best Darth Vader quote in comic books ever. You talking about the one where he's like, "All I see are like." What does he say? He's, he's like, he's like, I, he's like, I'm surrounded. Like, I'm surrounded by men. He's like, all I see are dead men. Dead yeah, men. <laughs> we got you surrounded. He's like, all I see is us surrounded yeah. by dead men dead or something men. like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a very very good. In fact, um, this Vader down crossed over with Star Wars and Darth Vader around issue fourteen or so for both series. The Darth Vader issue is is always sold out. It never. Um, it, it was reprinted. It was the first, I believe it was the first issue outside of the first few issues that was reprinted where they went to a second print because this was so popular, this series. Um, Vader Down, I believe, is a one-shot. Vader Down is a one-shot. But Yeah, the, the whole story, those what, like five issues, I think? Yeah, I think it's two Star Wars, two, two Star Wars, two Vaders in this one shot. But, um, I mean, the story itself really... Basically, uh, Darth Vader gets his sh uh, ship gets crashed or whatever uh, on a planet, and he's surrounded by the Alliance. But it doesn't matter; he's Darth Vader. So, uh, so check that one out. We have this one again for fifty dollars. Oh yeah, thank you, Eddie, for reminding me because you know there's so many things going on that I forget. I picked I picked a great um I picked a great giveaway, and I don't know if you can see it. Here, John, do me a favor and hold it up. 
Guys, I picked a timeless virgin cover for you guys. I like these a lot. These oh, very cool. Good. Those are usually one in one hundreds. They are one in one hundreds, but uh, this is the Colossus. This is the New Mutants thirteen. New Mutants, uh, the uh, the sketch ones are one in hundred, Robbie. This is the regular one. This is Colossus, and we're gonna do. I've been waiting for this all week. Hashtag. Alexp, A L E X P. I had the idea. Some of you the idea last week. We're doing it now. Al E X P, all lowercase. Hashtag A L E X P on this one. This is our giveaway tonight. It's free. The cover is done by an artist that we're not familiar with. You telling me that the hashtag is Alex P? Nope, it's Al X P. <laughs> it's Alex. Because it's the EXP and it's Alex together. All the right here. So, guys, this is New Mutants number three. This is the Alex Ross Colossus. <laughs> TJ. You took you all week. I thought really Nick hard. Nick should stop paying these people by the hour and it wouldn't have <laughs> taken all week. <laughs> uh, this is New Mutants. I'm sorry. New Mutants number 13. Guys, I have a $10 price tag on this book, but I'm just using this as a giveaway. So, right here, here's the giveaway. It's free if you enter right there. It's Colossus. If you like Metal Men, that's your book. E even though the book doesn't have the Metal Men in it. Yeah, I was going to say you want to get yeah. to that part. Of in fact, I, I don't even think the book has Colossus in it because it's New Mutants. See, that's the kind of thing they should do if they ever revisit Marvel DC crossovers. Like Colossus and the Metal Men. Ooh. You, you know what I mean? That's the kind of thing you should be seeing... You know, like Commander Beef, we have multiple copies of some of these books. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, Eddie Von B. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> that's our giveaway of the night. You can use that A L E X P for uh, the hashtag, <laughs> all lowercase, right there. Uh, back to some sketches. Woohoo! How about Mighty Avengers? Number one with dump it up Kang, and that's a great, cool, fun Kang image. Kang image. This is Kang sketch. Joe Del Beato, Mariano Nicieza. This one is sixty nine ninety nine. Guys, this one is Kang. He's a Time Lord. Pretty cool image right there. Kang's a Time Lord. He's like Doctor Who. Is that what you're saying? Isn't he a Time Lord? No, he's not a Time Lord. <laughs> He's a time traveler for sure. I mean, traveler. I think he considers himself a lord of time. But I will tell you this. Those boots got to be rough on a sweaty, <laughs> hot day. <laughs> Yo, how long does this kid can to put up his thigh-high boots? <laughs> thigh-high? Those are like groin-high. Look at the incredible <laughs> CJ design deep cut. Kang, not just for astronauts anymore. Oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I still find that on Amazon sometimes. I wonder how like I see someone offering Tang, and I'm like, should I? Nah, I better not. I wonder how he orders those boots, though. He's like, those boots were made for walking. They're from the Nancy I'm Sinatra collection. I'm six nine, but I need boots that are four foot two feet high. Or maybe you take the pair of pants and just cuts the middle out. Tang is that character they're always going to have fun with. He's a descendant of Tony Stark. He's a descendant of Freed Richards. He's a descendant of whoever. Uh, I could see why they used Kang as like a big bad. And I can also see now why they're sort of like, well, no, forget that. We never did. Well, there's Kang for you. If you uh, like that one's Kang. Done really well. But check him out. That's Kang. And again, that's $69.99. Uh, how many likes to get me to wear those boots? If we got those boots, I just put them on because they don't exist. The boots the size of my neck. Anyway, how about the next book? which is not Mighty Avengers number one. Yep. How about All-Star Batman and cue the Smash Mouth music. Hey, now, you're an All-Star. Oh boy. And this is a new sketch. Guys, look at this one right here. All-Star Batman number one with Robin. Robin sketch by Tony Scott. Right here. If you like... Robin, uh, look, it, it's a Batman psychic night. We had Nightwing, we had Robin. Uh, I mean, you know, Tim Drake, when he sort of appeared, 
as this Robin, you know, you had the staff, he was a computer hacker. Uh, that was like a timeless, I, I, there was a really cool debate of the two characters that really kind of epitomized that time for DC. You had Tim Drake Robin, who was very, very cool. And then you had their version of Superboy, um, who, who was not nearly as successful as the Tim Drake Robin was. And that was like, you know, the good news, bad news of the DC universe in that time period. Thankfully, you know, we still sort of have the Tim Drake uh, Robin. You know, we're about to, we're going to go to commercial in a few minutes. So I just want to stay on this book for a second. I want to engage the chat. I want to ask the chat a question. I'm going to ask Robbie and I want to talk about this with Robbie. Robbie, who is your favorite, and chat, who is your favorite Robin? Who is your favorite Robin? Any Robin is allowed. That guy right there. Tim Drake. First Robin to wear pants. That's enough for me. There you go. But what also about? I love it because he actually chose to be Robin. Unlike some of the others, right? Who kind of like stepped into the role or Batman put them in that role. Tim actually wanted to be Robin and was the only one who found out the identity of Bruce Wayne as Batman first. So yeah. I, I love yeah. Tim Drake. Hey, Dick Grayson, I know your parents just died, so come stay in my house. Also, we're gonna, we're gonna fight crime. Also, we're gonna, like like you're not going to school. See, oh. the ultimate swerve would have been if Bruce Wayne had his parents killed, so he would have gotten an award. Also, <laughs> that's hey, the Batman story I wanted to read. Hey, Jason Todd, uh, I I know how my first partner left, but I'm gonna do the same thing with you, and you're gonna be a kid and be Batman. Hey, you stole the, the hubcaps yeah. off the Batmobile? Come be a Robin. <laughs> so, guys, this is Tim Drake. In my opinion, it does have the best costume right here. Uh, Tim Drake right here, guys. All-Star Batman number one. This one right here is $69.99. $70 right here for this one. This is all. This is brand new. Brand new release today. I stole this off Rex's desk. So, this is. All-Star Batman 1 with Robin, Timothy Drake. Now, I found another new one, and this is Batman 357. 357, which is beautiful Batman sketch. Joe Del Beato, Mariano Nicieza. We have this tonight, brand new for $70. And guys, count the number of bats on that cover. Like, somebody had to draw all those Vs or Ms. Or W's multiple well, times. I think of what this is reminding me because this is kind of Feels like provocative a, of a few different McFarland cover, four twenty three almost. McFarlane cover. I, I I pick up Mike Turner off of this. I, I feel Turner I feel that too. Um, the upper body and the the proportion on the upper body yeah. definitely feel Turner esque. Um, the, I mean, capes are always you know tough, but yes. Del Biano does love the yellow circles. The only thing I would say why I don't get McFarlane vibes is the cape is five sizes too small. If it's if it's a McFarlane energy, you know what I mean? So like I need I need the second issue underneath that with the rest of the cape. So I got super excited, but I'm gonna hold that excitement for a few more minutes. We, we, we have our second break. So guys, we'll see you in, in a few minutes. We're back in a few. Or BattleQuest Comics at your local comic shop today. Imagine being at a convention and going to an interview panel that's just for you. No bustling crowds, no hours-long lines, just you, the moderator, and your favorite comic book creators. Well, this is pretty much that. 
Miss Jen sits down every week with two comic book creators for a live stream interview about their latest work, and you can ask them whatever you want. It's Talking Shop, Mondays at 5 Eastern on The Experience, Comic Culture and Sales. Guys, we're still here. The layer cover is right here, guys. That's not that's not even funny. It's kind of funny. I'm just gonna put these out in the car so they don't care. That's them. fine. John is taking some merchandise. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> just like every week. So we have comic books for sale, but we also have comic books. So we still have showing off one more time. Batman three fifty seven, the Batman sketch. Anybody wants this? this is brand new. This is a cool Batman sketch right here. Yellow circle behind him. It's the moon. It's the sun. Whatever you want. It's Batman. He is the knight. $70 on that one. Um, we also have a Power Man and Iron Fist number one with, this one is beautiful, Punisher sketch right here by Joe Del Beato, Mariano Nicieza. Commander and Beef, there will be signed books. Yes. Um, this Again, this is Power Man and Iron Fist, number one. Punisher sketch right here. Oh, this wow. one is very nice. Is John Spilius in the room? Because I'm assuming he'll want this. Hey, Robbie, <laughs> Ro Robbie do, do, some, do, do some more vape smoke again. What? <laughs> no, look at the cover. Oh, yeah, because that's funny. It's all sort of like uh, nice. Man. There you go. It's that special <laughs> Right here, this book does not come with vape smoke, unfortunately. But this one is, um, where's John? John's right here. I am. John's right here, Preston. <laughs> oh, oh no, John S. Oh, John S. Oh, S. Yeah. No, no. I was gonna say, yeah. Every time I see something pop up that's Punisher, I just think, yeah, no. He's like synonymous. He's, with he's not here because this book's already claimed. So we should just move on because if he saw this book and we and he wasn't here, he'd be very sad that it was offered. I'll so. tell you, you know, every time Power Man and Iron Fist come up. I think of the books and the stories, and I'm like, I know that Disney Plus kind of ruined Iron Fist, but I'm thinking to myself, if you revisited that with Power Man and Iron Fist, recast, read it, I, I think that would work. I really do. I understand Mike Coulter, the actor that played Luke Cage in the story, sort of, I guess it left a bad experience in his mouth, and he had no interest in returning. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure Robbie saw the tweet. By Mr. Finn Jones, but Finn Jones did a new tweet, and he, there's a there's an Iron Man comic in his tweet. Uh, sorry, Iron Fist comic in his yeah, tweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, so, there's, there's um, some rumors that like they're they're trying to do something with Iron. I'll tell you this, I know a lot of people didn't like that Netflix Iron Fist show. It wasn't a great show, but it was at least consistently bad. You know, a lot of those other shows get very inconsistent; they go up and down. Iron Fist was just the same level of consistency <laughs> all the way through. But I'll tell you this, in that Defender series, that whole dynamic between Luke and Danny was working for me. So I would have loved to have seen like Heroes for Hire with those two, because I think they could have made that work. If, if you were going to kind of find any part of that worked, whether it's the Defenders or, or you know, the, like the Iron Fist thing, the interaction they had was, I thought... I thought it worked well. I read comments that were attributed to Mike Coulter, and he just never felt comfortable. He never really sort of, 
I guess he never really understood what they expected from him. And then the story creatively was all over the place. I understand he, he was in a CBS, either he was or he still is in a CBS show called Evil. Where he CBS. Plays a priest. He said CBS. Oh, CBS. I, I thought he was in a CBS just walking around doing, doing a show. He's just awesome. picking up his prescription, man. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. No, but seriously, though, I, I, I could understand where – you're working at, at Disney Plus and you're not sure what's going on. And then CBS is like, here's a contract. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I totally get that, man. I got, you know, he, he's got to look out for himself. So we'll see what happens. I liked Finn Jones. I just, I don't, I don't know if Finn Jones is right to be Iron Fist. And I know for sure that the Iron Fist that the showrunners crafted for him to portray was not what people wanted to see. We'll see what happens, but I feel like they're going to bring back a lot of characters. So we will see. We have one more sketch of the night, and this is Despicable Deadpool 287 with Dazzler. Is that done as Taylor Swift? Well, that is kind of, yeah. I was going to say, is it my imagination, or is he, or is she doing like Taylor Swift as Dazzler? You know, again, this is Jessica Court doing her best. This one is eighty nine ninety nine. This is Despicable Deadpool two eighty seven with Dazzler. I, I desperately need a Dazzler movie with Taylor Swift just to see everyone's reaction. Like I don't care. I don't listen to her music, and I only know Dazzler in passing. But the the energy behind the walls here, I really want to see her join the MCU just to kind of. I no I'm just doubt. telling you this. I just watched a movie with Taylor Swift in it, and it didn't make it any better. So, <laughs> you watched the Eras tour? I did not. I didn't even know she was in a movie. Isn't that a concert film? She's in but... Cats. Uh, oh, spoiler. <laughs> um. Yeah. All right, guys. Next is a Swiftie. I, I pulled out some CGCs from the vault to offer these at good prices. So we've got a few CGC books right here. Well, Hobson, um, the Bedazzler. Wouldn't that be cool if it, it was like a crime fighter that had the gun? Uh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Eddie. Eddie, are you saying that John messaged you in the chat for the Punisher? Because we just want to claim. I mean, we don't normally do claims, people that aren't in the chat. But knowing, we're just making sure. I mean, it's something that John would want. So yeah. all right, we'll, we'll put John down as claiming this, and we'll confirm with him. Um, I was going to say, if you have a problem with the claim, you talk to him. But also, I'm sure he would want it. So it's John, and yeah. So anyway, yeah, all right. Really the first CGC book of the night, guys. Nick's not here, so these prices shh, don't even tell him. How about Action Comics a thousand '90s variant cover for eighty dollars? Action Comics a thousand '80s variant. This '90s variant uh, for only eighty dollars on this one. It's square bound. Hey, it's the thousandth issue of Action Comics. Ron's What's here. up, Do we Ron? Know what you will call it? Sketch coverage yeah. for Ron. Yeah. Just go into Nick's office. He doesn't know what's in there. Well, no, we should show him the sketch covers because Ron likes sketch covers. How about Batman number 50? Batman number 50. This is the sketch. Oh, sorry. Like this, that. this is the dynamic forces variant. The J. Lee sketch virgin edition. And do me a favor. Just wrap around, right? Wait, one second. Not only this, but to show off how cool this is. No, leave it on screen, Jack. It's a wraparound cover. So, can I do this? That's very cool. There we go. So, yes, beautiful cover. It's Jay Lee right here. Guys, this is a 9 6. We have this for $70 right here. J. Lee, DF variant, right here, exclusive to DF. And that one is $70 for the wraparound J. Lee. Where'd that pen, where'd that pen go? Oh, I got it. How about the next one, which is crossover number one. Crossover number one in 9-8. This one is $70. Yep, you heard me right. $70. MSRP of this is a hundred dollars, so we have it at seventy dollars tonight. Thank you, Eddie. Seventy. That's seven zero on crossover number one, right here. Seventy. 
How about sometimes you read a comic so good that literally happens to you? What's happening on the cover there? Just so you know, it's a Donnie Cates book, and it does blow your mind. It is a very meta book. Um, uh, how about DC's Love? What about Love? Well, Robbie, it's a battlefield. DC's Love is a battlefield number one. This is one of their Valentine's yep. Seventy dollars for this nine eight. You heard me right. These MSRP is a hundred dollars. I'm offering this from the vault for seventy dollars. Thirty percent off on all the slabs tonight. Um, nice. We got this one again. Valentine's Day melee. If you like the Sarlacc, this is your book, I guess. Maybe. You know, we are young, and no one can tell us that we're wrong. If you, if you guys don't understand that reference. Yeah, considering how many concerts of hers I've been to, I'm, uh, I'm good. Finally, we have Deceased, number two. Deceased, number two. This is a 9-8. This is zombie book. Speaking of Batman sidekicks, how about right here? They're kicking Batman's butt. This one right here is $70 also. You know what? $70 also, right there. Hey, you know what they say. Hell is for children. Hell is for children. I'm just going to do Pat Benatar quotes all here. night. <laughs> That's fine with me. Um, so, there are slabs. Guys, I have these slabs at $70. MSRP is $100 bucks on these on all these books, except for the Action Comics 1000 which is $80. Bucks. Um, and those are our CGC books. Guys, if you haven't, if you didn't do a hashtag yet, we're giving away this book right here. It is, you can see it. It is Alex Ross's Colossus Timeless Virgin. This is New Mutants number 13. This book is a $10 book. We're giving it away for free. All you have to do is A-L-E-X-P. Oh, that's Al why Alex is part of the hashtag because it's an Alex Ross cover. Okay. That makes exactly. sense. Exactly. I thought of that right now, of course. <laughs> no. Hey, you know what they say. We will be invincible. Always. I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, thinking of Helen Slater in a, in a scuba outfit where they rip the sleeves off. And I'm like, fair is fair. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> hashtag EXP, ALEX, all lowercase right there. If you guys want any of that. And with, uh, with that, we're going to do a quick little... A Lex cap because Ron got in the Ron's here. That's we're, what I was gonna say. So gonna Lex we're gonna show the sketches again really fast just to show them for Ron because Ron likes sketches. So let's just start with uh, Detective Comics 140, Tech 140. This is a Batman sketch by Jessica Court. This one is ninety dollars, eighty nine ninety nine. If you like Batman grimacing and blood right there, yep. All right, guys, listen. The best Pat Benatar quote will get a smile from me. There we go. Um, this is Ron. This one is $90 for Jessica Court Batman. How about Dawn of DC Primer, number one, with Superman sketch, Joe Del Beato, Mariano Nicieza, right here. Guys, if you like Cyclops but don't want to get a Cyclops book, here you go. Superman's heat vision. Right there. Uh, you should work you should have workshop that one, Alex. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I, don't know. I, thought <laughs> I guess right is away. this the workshop? <laughs> this is the workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned Wednesday if this book's still available. Um uh, we also have Batman Urban Legends number one with Nightwing. Day Arm Nightwing, right there. It's seventy dollars, right there. If you like the logo of Nightwing, it's in the background, right there. It's seventy. This might be the best cover we have tonight. I mean, all in. This that, might be the. That's great. still available because the Punisher was kicking butt. Yeah, that's true. This is. How about Emperor Up, Star Wars Vader Down, number one, Hut Slayer, Le Hut Slayer Leia, right here. Dan Nylinger, if you like, if you like um, an image of a character that Disney can no longer make a toy of, 
Emperor up, Vader down, brother. You're a heartbreaker right now, man. This is what hey! you <laughs> heartbreaker. Uh, this John's is... like, why did I show up today? I <laughs> uh, got this is story. I could have been down. watching Ghostbusters for the ninth time. <laughs> I was gonna say I could have been watching Ghostbusters, man. Hot Slayer Leia. I said Disney cannot make this toy anymore because they don't make uh, these toys anymore. Um, Dan Nylinger sketch here. This one is fifty dollars. Five zero fifty dollars. How about Mighty Avengers number one with a Kang sketch by Joe Del Beato, Mariano Nicieza. This one is seventy. Yeah, I think Gene Simmons wears these boots, doesn't he? I was gonna say this like the, it's like kiss, like the kiss crossover. Shout it out loud. Uh, we also have that's a good one. All Star Batman number one with a Robin sketch by Tony Scott. Timothy Drake right there. How many times have you seen New Empire? You know, I read that it's called Godzilla X Kong. But it's actually pronounced Godzilla Kong. You don't even pronounce There's no verses, no X. It's just Godzilla Kong, New Empire. Okay. Which I thought was really stupid. See, I thought it was a formula. And like Godzilla X Kong equals New Empire. That's what Uh, I was thinking. Why even put the X then if you're not supposed to say it? I I hate this kind of stuff. I mean, listen, like, honestly. honestly. it It was originally called Godzilla Twitter Kong. And they changed it. I like Marcus. Godzilla X Con. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> not allowed to vote <laughs> where do you find an orange jumpsuit that size man God- godzilla con air okay how about the, um batman 357 with a batman sketch by joe del Beato, mariano nicieza for 70 this one right here nice batman sketch for 70 and the final sketch of the night is Despicable Deadpool 287 with Dazzler sketch by Jessica Court for $89.99. Dazzler by Jessica Court. All right. Uh, I was looking through our boxes and I found something very special. I found a stack of medals that I that we want. Nick wants to do as a special. So tonight is a special. This is. Red Sonia Volume 6, Number 2. Red Sonia Volume 6, Number 2. The Trish Forstner Stray Dogs variant. Now, this is the last Red Sonia series by Mirka and Dolfo. The current series is by Torin Grombeck. This is the last series by Mirka and Dolfo. This is a metal cover. And we have this trade dress. Ready for this? $75. $75. But hold on a second. Because we also have the Virgin for $75. Oh, wow. Ron claims That's the Dazzler. Sick. Awesome, Ron. All right, guys. He'll open that up. He'll be able to put on the Eris Tour. On yeah. the so we have the regular and the Virgin. Both of these, the metal cover is $75. But, there's a but? Yeah, there's a but. As a special, if you guys want both the Virgin and the Trade Dress, again, these are metals. I'm doing both for $120. You heard me right. That is two metal books for $120. You're fired. Next week I'll be in here with Amy. You're fired. What? That's that's really cheap. Bro. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't don't tell Nick. Nick well, this this is like, perfectly no. timed with the release of Feral from Tony Fleece and Trish Forstner and Tone Rodriguez, yeah. right? So it's oh, we're, timed. We're, we're getting there, Robbie. But absolutely, with the almost sellout of Feral number one. I'm embarrassed at how much I like these dogs. They can put these dogs on any book, and I buy and on any cover, and I buy the book. Even if I don't read the book, I just because those dogs yeah. speak to you, John. They say we belong. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, make sure if you see these dogs, be nice and pat Benatar them on the head. Oh no! 
Come on, Robbie. What the heck? <laughs> yes! There you go. <laughs> What did I miss? A rim Maybe. shot. Let me tell you, you did not miss much. Uh, <laughs> you did not miss much. Again, final call, guys. This is the Red Sonia number two medal set. Virgin or trade dress, $75 each on the medals or $120 for both. MSRP is 100 bucks on these. You heard me right. That's some really nice books tonight. I know. Really it's gone through the dogs now. I would love to see more stray dogs, um, similar to like the first series. Well, before we get to the incentives, we've got some sign books. Let's go over the sign books. Start. Hi, Robbie, how are you? I'm great, Amy. How about yourself? All right. Just well. making sure everyone everything's still going well, that the show isn't getting out of hand. Everyone's liking and filling out their forms and, you know. No, you we're know. we're all good. In fact, we're all fired up around here. You know, what I have to do all the time, apparently. But yeah, he's giving the stuff away so cheap that you'll be doing the show with me next week. Oh dear, he's fired. <laughs> you guys are fun. Alex, um, you better run. You better goodbye. <laughs> uh, so let's start with Shadowland. Uh, let me. Let me guys. Let me know if you need anything. Shadowland number four, signed by Billy Tan. We got this for 20 bucks. You heard me right. Blowout price, Shadowland. If you like books about how light sources land on, uh, land on things, Shadowland right here. And I'm not even going to make There's a Shadows Shadowland. of the Night have been a tar reference right Shadows now. Night I reference. wanted to, but I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to. Good. Uh, Daredevil and Bullseye right there. Right there. Again, Daredevil Bullseye. This book is $20. Um, We're probably going to get a C and D from whoever owns the catalog of Pat Avatar music. I can see this coming pretty quickly. Again, guys, seriously, $20 for a signed book with Dan and Forces COA and everything. Billy Tan for $20. You know, that's one of my favorite bits in the uh, fa uh, Fast Times at Richmond High movie when, like, they're like, oh, everybody's on the Pat Benatar look this summer or whatever, like, and all, every, like, everybody has the Pat Benatar hair and all that stuff. That's good stuff. Eddie, nice. Hit him with your best shot, John. Speaking of best shot, how about Dan Jurgens and signed copy of Blue and Gold? If you like Blue Beetle... And Booster Gold or Blooster Beetle and Blue Gold, this is your book right here. Two Best Friends. This book is so much fun. And it's by Dan Jurgens, who wrote such great stories with them. $39.99 for this tonight. Blue and Gold, number one. Signed in blue. Number 23 of 50. For $40. Should have been signed in blue and gold. And gold. I was thinking. Yeah. Said, yeah. Well, well, you know what? He could have taken the two pens and then signed them. Could have done a Clayton, a Clayton Crane version? I, this right. is, you know what? People are wondering how, you know, we had Blue Beetle, the movie. And I thought it was entertaining, but I just, you know, it was almost like too little too late, I think, for that version of the, the DCEU. Um, I'm hoping that we get somewhere the Jurgens version of, 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 of Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. Because I think there if you get the right two actors for that, uh, you know, there was a time where I thought the right actors for that were Nathan Fillion and uh oh god, I can't think of his name now. He was also a Firefly. Alan Tudyk. And now he's in the, oh, the guy that played Alan Tudyk. yeah, Alan Tudyk, yeah. Yeah. And I thought that with the right script, those guys could have made this work. Uh, I, I, I mean, I've always been a fan of Booster Gold and Blue Beetle, and I mean, c c growing up, I mean, getting in the comics with Death of Superman, I mean, and the Justice League is so important in that time because you know they helped Doom, or they hold back Doom there for a second. Being introduced to Booster Gold, Blue Beetle, Fire, Ice, the greatest story, John Jones told. pretending to be uh, Fire and lucky. Ice. You're making a Pat Benatar reference here, brother. I was gonna say it's okay. Listen. Anyway, uh, now, I remember that dude because I remember I was a kid watching or uh, reading that stuff, and I thought it was crazy because like B 
Booster Gold gets his costume ripped up, so then he has to get this like mechanical suit like right afterwards. Like I was so into that, man. Well, the idea, the very idea of Booster Gold is sort of a little bit timeless, right? This is the guy that, you know, there's a guy who's destined to be a hero. And then there's the other guy. And Booster Gold is the story of the other guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, Let's you know, be honest. That that DC 52 series is one of my favorite explorations of Booster Gold, where he becomes supernova and actually, like, becomes a hero. And then they yeah. completely digress the character after that again, just to be a joke. But, you know, it's fine. It, it is what no, it I is. Mean, I, I think it's... Let's put it this way. Comics have to have a natural sort of rhythm to them, like a beginning, middle, and end, and then they start everything again, right? The problem is they don't do it uniformly or consistently. Like DC is sort of like constantly rebooting parts of the universe and other parts of the universe. If you're going to start a story, let's say it's going to be a five-year universe, you end that character's story arc with him becoming supernova, I think that works. If you come back and bring the character back as Booster Gold with a whole new universe, that's fine. To just undo it is sort of, what was the point of that? Yeah, Glenn Powell. Um, <laughs> uh, Bradley Cooper, I think, is sort of, I think, Brian Co I think Bradley Cooper is all done with superhero movies, quite honestly. I think that guy's sort of in the stratosphere now where he's, you know, I, I think he's done with that. Uh, Glenn Powell, I, I could see they could make Glenn Powell work in a bunch of, they could make Glenn Powell work in what I really want to see is I kind of want to see a Hal Jordan Green Lantern done in the 1960s. And then I want to see, um, I want to see them find an actor to be John Stewart Green Lantern currently, like a 2024 or whatever, 2025. Well, that's you know kind of I mean? interesting. Like, maybe you take, like, the whole thing instead of Abin Sewer crash landing and giving the ring to Hal. Maybe Hal doesn't give the ring to John or something like that. Yeah, that's crazy. sort of what I'm, I'm kind of, in my mind, I'm imagining, you know, like, instead of Abin Sewer and the crashed ship, Hal Jordan's crashed jet. And Hal Jordan knows he's not going to make it. So he tells the ring, hey, look, go find, you like, the good person. And they find whoever they cast as John Stewart. Oh, both wearing green. But I believe uh, I may be a little bit of a bigger Green Lantern fan. I want to say that would only work after we've established how Jordan is doing something. Because I, I mean, I want to see John. I want to see Kyle. I want to see Guy. Very much so. See, that's the but, predicament that DC is going to be in when it comes to Green Lantern films or TV shows. Is that no matter who you pick, even if you pick multiples, you're going to upset somebody. Yes, you're sir. somebody whose favorite so, Green Lantern is Jessica Cruz, or somebody whose favorite Green well, Lantern is. Simon so Jazz or something. So Jessica Cruz is actually the best pick to ha as as the Green Lantern for the series because um, diversity and having a female lead would be great because it allows you to enter it through her eyes. She's very new. I mean, she could be green and very new and like a new character and have her enter this world of Green Lanterns where Hal, I mean, Guy's here and John's here and we never see Hal because Hal is so effing busy doing what he's doing as at the top we only need we only need to see how like like even if it's even if tom cruise is how we only need to see how for like two minutes like give him a like have him save the day I at the saw, end and just like i saw an ai version of tom cruise's hell jordan i am not a fan of ai art let's be clear i'm not advocating for ai art um professionally but as people just goofing around on social media I don't really care too much, you know what I mean? And I have to admit, they took the 1980s Top Gun version of Tom Cruise and turned him into Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, with the white gloves and everything, and he looked really good. And I think a way to sort of incorporate some of these characters is to do them in time periods. Like Green Lantern Core as a TV show can be episodic. You can have Jessica Cruise currently. You can have Jon Stewart maybe 20 years ago. You can have Hal Jordan 50 years ago, and this way, um, Robbie Pardick wrote a, good, good, a really good point why Green Lantern is a loser for a TV or movie project, because whoever version you pick, you're going to upset way more people than you please, right? So if you do the Green Lantern core, like kind of like through the ages a little bit, you know what I mean? You can sort of, 
create a situation where, you know, you get some episodes of, you know, um, John Stewart, right? And then you fast forward, maybe John Stewart is dealing with like a 2000 millennium crisis, right? And then the next episode is Jessica Cruz in 20, what, it would be 2025 before they get this thing made. And then she's involved with something and what she's involved with leads her back to Hal Jordan 1960. Like what happened yeah. there? And, and I was making the point that there is allegedly a Green Lantern TV series in development that they say has a, a true detective kind of vibe to it. Should be Hal and John. That's that's where you're going to hit most of the fandom is with Hal and John, right? I think so. Yeah, I, I very yeah. much. Listen, so. I, I want to see Green Lantern John Stewart, and then I also want to see Green Lantern Stephen Colbert. So I know Guy there you Gardner go. has their fan base. Uh, there was a time where Guy Gardner was super popular. I really hope they put Nathan Fillion in a bowl cut. Like I really, oh, yeah. I was gonna say, if they make, they, like they can't not. Like, they can't. If they want to make Guy Gardner work, they put Nathan Fillion in a bowl cut. And I know he, that guy loves his hair, so maybe they have to pay him a little bit more money to ruin his hair uh, for ABC's The Rookie season ten or whatever it is. But uh, all right, we got a ton of more books that would work. Uh, let's move on to Web of Venom Wraith number one, signed by Mister Donny Cates. Yes, I pulled I pull a Donny Cates book, numbered 81 right here. If you like, so it's a great it's fun cover. Silver book, I have this for $40. dollars 39 on this one. Donny Cates right here. It's a great here. Kyle Hotz cover, too. I love his work. Uh, beautiful cover, Web of Venom, Wraith. Um, I also pulled a Garth Ennis signature for you guys. I pulled a Battlefields, Dear Billy, number two. This one is signed by Garth Ennis. It's a dynamite book, but it's signed by Garth with Dynamic Forces COA. This one is also $40. If you don't have a Garth Ennis signature in your collection, now you can. He doesn't do a lot of shows. Garth Ennis for $40. This book came out when like Lone Ranger was what people were associating dynamite with. And I had to be the one to tell people, look, I love the Lone Ranger. I love that dynamite's doing the Lone Ranger. Battlefields is a completely different gear shift. Battlefields has like real sort of emotional storytelling content. Yeah, Garth Ennis is really good at war stories in particular, yeah. right? Like some Absolutely. of his best issues of Preacher deal with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he had the book War Story over at Vertigo. Oh, story, right? yeah. This is kind of like a spiritual successor of that. But I agree with Jay. When I met Garth Ennis and I got my book signed, I was like, I know that, like, for instance, if I sign your book, my signature doesn't necessarily look like, you know, Robbie Bills or anything like that. But I'm looking at Garth Ennis's signature all the time, and I'm just like, bro, what is this? <laughs> like, it's just, like, what is that? If you didn't want to sign my book. You could have just told me because but now he's consistent. Is he, that, that's his signature. You know, it's it's a all, genius. All we, all we guarantee is that, that that the books are signed by the artist. What they're physically putting on there, we hope it's their name, but we, we don't control that. Well, signatures anyway. aren't necessarily accurate portrayals of someone's it's name. Right? Cardiogram, Maverick. I was going to say that's what it looks like. Or some kind of seismograph reading. But this was signed by Garth, and it is $40. Someone pushed him when he was signing it, probably. Right? <laughs> like, oh, my bad. <laughs> um, we also have 10 grand. Num Ooh, excuse me. 10 grand number one. Dynamic Forces variant. Signed by Jay Lee. There's our Jay Lee signature. We have this for $59.99. 10 grand number one. This is the, the Dynamic Forces variant. This one is $59.99. Number two of 100 for this one right here. Jay Lee. And if you like Jay Lee, well, I brought a special Jim Lee. Here is a Jim Lee Suicide Squad. Number one from Rebirth. Suicide Squad. The Jim Lee autos are tough. They start they start at three hundred dollars. So three hundred for Jim Lee. Are we Suicide sure that's Squad. signed by Jim Lee and not Garth Ennis? <laughs> this one, yes. This this one is Jim. Jim but you know, does it really matter at this point? For some... Does it matter? No. But <laughs> well, we group next week. We can't we can't get these anymore. This is Jim Lee signed Suicide Squad number one for two ninety nine ninety nine. How about Justice League number 53, signed by Liam Sharp? $29.99 on this one. Justice League number 53. If you like monkeys on your book, there's your book. Enter the Metalverse, Death Metal. Justice League right there. Now that's a cool signature. I love Liam Sharp's signature. I really do. Yeah. He's cool. 
He's good. Well, thank you. You know the way Ryan Stegman signs books with a little stegosaurus? Yeah. I'm assuming Robbie signs his signature with like a little trophy, right? <laughs> <laughs> trophy and then the R in the middle, right? Look. No, it's usually a Pat Benatar sketch. So nice. <laughs> yeah, if you look, the Batman who laughs is in the mirror of the sword right there. So again, this is Liam Sharp signed Justice League 53 for $30. And the final signed book of the night is Evil Empire number five, signed by Max Bemis. Evil Empire number five, Max Bemis. Max Bemis. You, if you want to give George Washington a mustache, there you go. This is $29.99 on this one. $30 for Max Bemis signed Evil Empire from Boom. All right, those are the signed books. We have a bunch of new comics coming out this week. So this is Wednesday's releases. Books that come out this week. We'll have them offered to you now. They are ship out Wednesday at the earliest because they don't come out till Wednesday. But we'll have them for you right now. So let's start with Red Sonia, Empire of the Dam number one. Red Sonia, Empire of the Damned number one. Here are all the covers that are available. So, this is the brand new Red Sonia series. Brand new Red Sonia series. Um, brand new series uh, by writer Steve Niles and Alessandro Amoroso. So, while the, the Torrent series is the main series, this is the new mini series. Red Sonia, Empire of the Damned. And this the is like are, zombie stuff, right? This is like Red Sonia versus zombies or something? Uh, Yeah, Steve Niles wrote 30, 30 Days of Night, so this is more of a horror Yeah, this is sort of like, uh, I was actually talking about this book on Twitter with the cosplayer who's on the cover, Rachel Holland. And she was also saying how excited she was to see, she's a horror fan, huge horror fan. And she was excited to see Red Sonia kind of pushed into a genre where, now I understand people are going to say, well, you know, she fought zombies and dynamite. This is more horror than just like a zombie apocalypse. You know what I mean? Um, while they can be scary, but I think this is sort of, yeah. you know what I mean? This is, this is the, they're, they're, they're trying to make it, they did a really cool book several years back for DJ Thoris. And DJ Thoris had generally pretty much stories on Mars. And then they did one where it was very much horror. They're trapped. They don't have any weapons. And they're trapped in a cave with like the carnivorous white apes of Mars. Ooh. And it's a different vibe. You're not used to seeing that. You know what I mean? You're not used to seeing DJ Thoris as a quote unquote final girl. Um, and I think you're going to see that energy a little bit with Red Sonia too. Yeah. She's going to deal with stuff that it's different. It's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just different. Um, BB, I got you. We're, we're going to go over the covers right now so everyone sees. <laughs> Cover price is four ninety nine for each of the issues. Start on the left with Joshua Middleton. Joshua Middleton cover A on the left. The next one is cover B, Joseph Michael Lindsner. Cover B is Joseph Michael Lindsner. Cover C is the John Tyler Christopher negative space. Cover C is John Tyler Christopher really negative space. Because yeah. it's John Tyler Christopher. Yeah. I wanted it to be an action figure cover. Um. Cover D is the cosplay, Rachel Holland. We also have the blank, which is the G on the left. The white blank, which is the G on the left. And we have cover R, which is the FOC bonus. That's the red blank on the right. All books are $4.99. But we also have three special Limited covers also. So, if you guys look on the top left. Uh, Jay, you can, you can leave that up. Um, if you look on the top left, cover A, which is the Josh Milton cover, we have a foil version of that. A foil version of cover A, and that is 
So a, that first cover really kind of connotes that this is going to be it's like a horror, like a yeah. horror book. And I think that not that there's anything wrong with any of the other covers, but I think if you really want to communicate to people that this is not just her cutting some a little bit different. I'm on, yeah, this is a little bit different. I'm super excited. For so that the the foil cover is cover E for nine ninety nine. We also had a foil virgin cover of cover A. So the foil virgin, Josh Middleton, uh, is thirty dollars. The foil virgin is thirty dollars, and finally we have the limited virgin, which is the regular cover, non-foil as a virgin, and that is fifty dollars. So cover A we have as a regular cover A, a foil cover E. A virgin foil cover F and the limited virgin cover H, which is the rare one. That one is $50. Again, this is all for the first image, which is Josh Milton's image. And again, this is all Red Sonia Empire of the Dam number one. If anybody wants any of the covers singularly, let us know and we will fulfill that, Red Sonia. For you. Oh, you know what? I'll throw this out here too, just because we have a, a cosplay cover up. We had a cosplay cover up um, before. Mr. Easy, uh, red or white? I'm assuming you want white. Just confirm. Go, go. Sorry about that. No, I just wanted to point out people always ask, like, how can you get these signed by the cosplayers or whatever? Well, you can go find them at shows for sure. Most of the cosplayers generally have stores, like web stores, where they've got copies of these that they sign. They can personalize them or whatever. Um, the best way to find these people, like, we don't. We don't do that here, but the best way to just follow them on social media, usually Instagram, um, they've got pretty active channels with all the different cosplays or whatever. Um, that's probably the easiest way to sort of, you know, get her to sign that or, you know, whatever. Mr. Easy, go like, I got you there. Um, guys, you can all, you can also mention the cosplayers. I'm in the cover gallery in the back of the books where they show, we show up all the covers. The cosplay covers always have credits for their Instagram and their social media. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So really do, yeah. you can always reach out to them and respectfully, of course, ask them when what, what, what their upcoming shows are, where they're going to be. Um, I mean, I'm sure you can mail to them too, but, you know, here's the thing. And, Jay, you can take it down now. Um, yeah, these are cosplayers that are on the cover of comic books. They are thrilled that they're on the cover, I'm sure. And they would love to hear, you know, they love to hear the feedback. Yeah. This weekend, uh, I think at WonderCon, Rachel Holland was there. She was there doing Red Sonya one day. Uh, she was there just being herself one day, going and stuff. And then she was there dressed as Harley Quinn with Sosa Mike. That's pretty cool. Uh, well, I, I, cosplayers now are starting to partner with creators, artists, and they're starting to do these like art to life, life art things where you're having uh, Lucio Perillo. Lucio Perillo took a Rachel Holland cover and basically drew it. Mm, and that's cool. a lot of the cosplayers now, uh, Gracie, the cosplay last, she's been doing it. Um, and Ireland Reed just very recently mentioned that she'll be announcing soon. She's kind of forming a sort of collab with an artist and this artist will be drawing her cosplay covers from different styles. Marcus, so, if, you, if you wanted an Alex Jedi Master variant, we have to figure out what book that would go on. And no Vampirella Alex. CJ wants some blanks. Guys, we have our last break right now. We have so much more. We have three more Dynamite books. We have um, the Incentives, which are super hot, with including Feral. And we have She-Hulk back issues. Yep, Savage She-Hulk. So stick around. See you in like two back minutes. back a little bit? Live from New York. Uh, what? Oh, sorry. Uh, live from Cleveland? It's Friday night? It's Friday Night Live! With Nancy McCann. And Ricky! And sometimes Carlos! And featuring boxes and boxes of rare comics! Unique collectibles. Lots of smiles and conversations with new friends. Friday Night Live with Comics Unlimited. Friday night from 9 to 11 on The Experience. 
According to a statistic that I just made up, people spend four hours a day changing the television channel. People who watch the experience don't do that. Save yourself a ton of time by tuning into the experience and enjoying our new original programming seven days a week. And then tell your friends. Think about the money they could save on batteries in the remote alone just by tuning into the experience. Find out more by scanning the QR code below. All right, we're back. We are back. We got, we got books. So let's just move on to the next that new Diamond book that comes out this week. Comes out this week, and it's a special. Because if you like tops, we got Garbage Pail Kids. Oh. Garbage Pail Kids, Trashing Through Time, number four. Now, what is that you see? Yep, you see it right. Each issue is polybagged with its own Garbage Pail Kids trading card. Oh. Man, it's 1994 all over again. That's right. Each of these books come with the trading <laughs> card. Guys, these are $4.99 each. How bad. Starting with cover A, which is Tom Bunk on the left. Tom Bunk on the left, cover A. Cover B, Jeff Zapata. Cover C is David Acevedo. Cover D is the classic John Pound trading card. All four of those are $4.99 each. If anybody wants this series, let me know. We also have a limited cover for cover A. This is the Tom Bunk on the left. It's limited virgin. Ooh. That one is K, and that one is $50. So we do have a limited virgin of cover A. That is cover K, which is $50. If anybody wants Garbage Pail Kid, let us know. The latest series, Trash of the Time, number four. Moving on to the next Dynamite book that's brand new this week. This is John's favorite book of the week. Just in time for Godzilla Kong New Empire. We have Kong the Great War number five. Kong the Great War number five. I love this book. When Nick told when Nick came back from a con and said we were doing King Kong, I told you this before. I felt like we were at like a steak and lobster dinner and he picked up the tab. I was super happy. I love King Kong. Um, different versions of it over the years, different publishers. Some have been more on you know capture the character more than others i love the fact that this is sort of we're seeing this is before the first movie this is set before the first movie this is sort of a world war one era and i'll tell people right now if you haven't checked this out yet if you're a king kong fan uh absolutely absolutely you're, check this out three covers here cover i got 3.99 cover price for each of these 3.99 cover a is jay lee Cover B in the middle is Butch Gweiss. And cover C is Joe DeVito. If anybody wants Kong of the Great War number five, we can pull any covers for you. That Jay Lee is fantastic, y'all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, the J League is like the kind of typical Kong pose, right? Yeah. On the cliff, beating his chest sort of thing. Uh, Joe DeVito's had a lot of Kong experience. And I'll tell you what, this this very much has energy from the classic movie poster. Finally, we have Disney Villains. Cruella de Vil, number three. We have uh, it's issue three of Cruella, starting with cover A on the left. You guys, these are all three ninety nine on this one. Cover A is Sweeney Boo. Cover B is Sway. Cover C is Greta Lusky. And cover D is the action figure variant, Miriana Puglia. A, B, C, or D. If anybody wants any of these, oh wait, uh, actually, let's figure. Uh, individuals, let us know. And we'll pull these for you. And those are the new Dynamite books that come out this Wednesday. Again, we'll go over these on Wednesday when they release, but it's this week, so we want to be ready. We have incentives from this past week, and boy, are they hot. We had about, we had, I think there were like 18 incentives, and we're down to three. We're down to eight. So most of them have already sold because they were super hot, super popular. But what is left? We're going to start with Feral, number one, of course. Um, but, Jay, we're going to show up. We're going to go high ratio first. Show off the Feral one, one in 50. So, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to do a bundle first. We're going to do a bundle first. We only have three of these available. We, we, we can do a one in 50. A 1 in 25 and a 1 in 10. Okay? The 1 in 50 you see here is $30. I'm a huge fan of this cover. It's one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. Alex, I would give you 10,000 cool points if you know the movie. I do not. John knows it. Well, I feel it has a very much like a Dawn of the Dead cover. It's Day of the Dead. Day, Day of, of the, the Dead. dead. I'm sorry. I missed it. Yeah. Um, so, um, Jay, show the uh, 1 in 25. This is the 1 in 25 Sweeney Boo. And this one is 10. And finally, we have the 1 in 10 Trish Forstner, which we, we, we had at $5. Cover price is 4 We have this at, at $5. So, so this will lead to the inevitable Stray Dogs, Cats or Feral crossover. Absolutely. <laughs> so first things first, <laughs> we're going to do a cover set of all three. 1 in 50, 1 in 25, and 1 in 10. We're going to give you the 1 in 10 for free. So $40 for the 1 in 50, 1 in 25, 1 in 10. You're getting the 1 in 10 for free. We, they, these are the cats Robbie wants to be watching, to be clear. Yeah, if, any, oh, yes. if anybody ha has any, uh, we only have three sets available. Becky Bate wants a 1 in 10 for $5. Nice. You might be right because when Stray Dogs started, I don't think people really knew what to make of it. Maverick wants a one in ten. Farrell's great too. It actually got the triple crown on my weekly comic book review. It got cover of the week, it got pick of the week, and it got smell of the week. Was this the was this the cover that got cover of the week? The cover was cover B, which is a Dawn of the Dead. So what they yeah. did was cover B is a Dawn of the Dead homage. The one in fifty is a Day of the Dead homage, and the one in one hundred, which I did not get, is a Night of the Living Dead homage. And is it a black and white? No. It's uh, it's that that cover, so it's black and white with the green logo. Oh. With the green, yeah. Oh, do we have that? Sold out. We had five available. We sold them as sets, and they I'm, sold. I'm a, I sold all five in a minute. Kind of not surprised. <laughs> yeah. Um. So guys, again, Feral one in ten is five dollars. Sorry, Robbie. I was trying to hook you up, man. But one in twenty. It's all right. Thank you. One in twenty-five is ten dollars. And one in 50 is $30. I, I should 45. call in my favors and reach out to Tony and be like, hey, brah, I need one of those Night of the Living Dead covers, like, right now. <laughs> Come on. Well, so, I, God, if I you... think a big reason that, that both Stray Dogs and this have hit is it's really legitimately something different. Yeah, you know what I mean? I mean it's it, not it was... superheroes. It's not zombies. And I love Walking Dead, but no more zombie comics for a while. No, the, the, sto the, the story is fun. This um, is something that's just new and interesting and fun clearly they're putting energy into the covers and, and yeah i think jay is right i won't be surprised at all if this meets and exceeds the stray dog so technically it's a level up right because in the original stray dogs tone rodriguez did the layouts and trish worked on those layouts this time trish is doing all the animals yep. 
and Tone's doing all of the backgrounds and it gives it that Don Bluth 70s Disney kind of aesthetic yes. to it where you got these rich, beautifully colored backgrounds by Brad Simpson and then the flat coloring and line work on the foreground. It looks amazing. It's so good. My guess is you'll probably see this methodology if it succeeds duplicated elsewhere. Yeah. People yeah. are going to realize, hey, they're onto something here. Yeah, so this is actually is an ongoing series, Dwayne. It's right. This is not a mini series like Stray Dogs was. This is an ongoing series. Oh, cool. In, so, in the back of the book, he even says he wants to tell this story for 18 years, honestly. Keep going. So, no, again, not, that's, that's yeah. big. I'm glad you so, I assume it was a mini series. We have the one in, again, one in 10 for $5, one in 25 for 10 one in 50 for 30. We're doing all three, and you get the one in 10 for free. $40 for the set. This is still available as long as it's available. So that is federal number one. Now, we're moving on to the next book, which is actually something interesting. Um, this is Jackpot and the Black Cat number one. This is the one in 25 Pablo Villa Lobos. Now, we got four copies. All four copies have a very heavy top corner damage we have not heard back on damage replacement so we're selling these at cover price so these are one in 25s they have top right corner damage it's a crunch these are cover price at five dollars each is this jim mckay uh no this is pablo villalobos oh for the writer uh yeah, I was just it is say. not mckay no so, okay. guys, uh, we're selling these at cover price. These are 125s. If you want the cover, it's here. But, again, these have a top corner damage. So these are $5 instead of $20. They're $5. So we also have one copy left of the Jackpot and Black Cat number one. One in 100, Young Gene Yoon. One in 100, Young Gene Yoon. If you love redheads that are tall and about 80 feet tall, this is the attack of the jackpot woman. $75 for this one. We only have one copy available, and it's $75. Um, the, the biggest, hottest, besides Feral Marvel book of the week was, yes, Maverick Becky Lynch right there. It's the man right there. We have Miles Morales, Spider-Man Volume 2. This is number 18. Alternal, alternatively known as issue 300. Starting with the 1 in 25, Kari Andrews. Beautiful cover right there. 1 in 25. This is a very big, big book. Lots of story content. It is issue 300. We have this for $20. Big book here. Issue 300. What happens in here? Who knows? But Amazing Spider-Man 300 introduce the actual character of Venom. So what will Miles Morales' Spider-Man 300 introduce? Becky Bate claims one of the Spider-Man right there. Becky Bate. All right. We have, we have a few more copies of this book available still. But we also have a few copies of the coolest cover of the week. How about the 1 in 50? The 1 in 50 Addy Granoff cover. 1 in 50 for $80. This is a virgin cover. It's beautiful. It's selling well above ratio between 90 and 100. We have this at $80. It's the 1 in 50 for $80. Again, we Great only cover. have four. We only have four left, Robbie. We sold a bunch of these this past week. No um, surprise they've there. Been flying. Um, this is going to be on people's end of the year list for one of the covers of the year. I guarantee you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's just Miles in a classic pose with a beautiful background in a realistic style as a virgin cover on issue 300. Beautiful book right there. Finally, the last incentive of the night is Ultimate Spider-Man, volume three, number three. One in, one in 25, Greg Land. One in 25, Greg Land on this one. We have this one for $15. One in 25, Greg Land for $15. Beautiful image, bright yeah. colors there. Spider Man right here. And Kenneth reminds me guys, if you haven't entered the giveaway yet, it's hashtag ALEXP. Enter the giveaway. We're giving away. It is New Mutants number 13, the Alex Ross Timeless Virgin cover. 
the Alex Ross Timeless Virgin Cover. It's A L E X P, all lowercase. Here is the beautiful, beautiful book. You guys look on the back. I have a $10 price tag on this. So this isn't just any Joe Schmo giveaway. This is a Alex Ross right here. Guys, it's free to enter. A L E X P. Alex Ross, timeless classic, virgin. All those words together, correct. Right there. So, Man, this ultimate Spider Man cover is really nice. Yeah, I really like it. All right, guys, that was most of the books, but I found some back issues of something really cool. This one is pick up the Becky. So, oh, yeah, Becky, Becky's going to be very happy. Yeah. Um, cover. Yes, Dwayne. Um, so, uh, we have Savage She Hulk. I pulled a Savage She Hulk run from the vault. So, we're going to start with Savage She-Hulk number two. This is a new stand. This is the second appearance of Jennifer Walters. This is the second appearance of She-Hulk. And it's only $5. $5 new stand copy, second She-Hulk. This is the only $5 copy, and Becky Bait wants this. So... With that, we're going to open it up to other copies of Savage She-Hulk. Now, all these copies are $3 each. What? You heard me right. When you claim, claim with the issue number and with the newsstand, please say NS. Some of these will have both newsstand and directs. But number three, newsstand is three dollars you want to punch she hulk out a window this is your book three dollars for she hulk number three that's a great deal because especially since the show debuted a couple years ago it's hard to find this era of she hulk right now yeah i mean this is the <clears throat> third appearance of she hulk this is the original run 1979 to 1980 savage she hulk and becky bates got that how about Savage She-Hulk, number four. Again, $3 each. We have a new stand and a direct. So we'll give you the option. Um, Talavera, do not. Canadian Survivor. Um, this is new stand or direct. Doesn't matter. $3 each. Let me know which one you want. Becky, if you want these, let me know. Uh, if you want both, we would do both. But just confirm whether you want is a, is a new stand or direct for this one. This is number four. So put that on the wall with number four. Becky's got the new stand number four. Awesome. So, guys, we also have direct, direct number four is available. We have three copies of number four direct. Anybody wants a copy of number four? How about number five? Number five, we have two copies. Both are new stands. She-Hulk, Savage She-Hulk, Crawler in the Caverns of Doom. This is Savage She-Hulk. Number five as a newsstand right there. And while that's loading, we also have Savage She-Hulk. Number six. Becky, I got you there. We have one copy left of five newsstands. How about number six? Oh, the Iron Man appearance. Yep. We have one <laughs> newsstand and two directs. Number six. One newsstand, two directs. Again, three dollars each. No nose Iron Man. Indeed. If you like reflections of green women in, in your mask, <laughs> here you go. You really Six. gotta work on this stuff, Alex. Come on. You're right. I, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. It's a Monday. I get my best stuff on Thursdays. No, <laughs> you gotta warm up throughout the week. <laughs> yeah, guys, if you love swamp demons, if you love gray alligators, here you go. Savage She Hulk seven, both the directs. Savage She Hulk number seven, right here. Savage She Hulk seven. So that's seven right there. Four, five, six, and seven. Four. 
Uh, the green women from Star Trek are called Orions. Yeah, you want Yvonne DiCarlo, who is Batgirl, played uh, uh, an yeah, Orion. Yeah, the original one. Um, so, Becky, we have a seven direct for you right there. Cool, Becky, I got you on that one. Uh, that one's nicer, actually. How about number eight, Feeling Great? Guys, if you love Man-Things, right here, She-Hulk, Man-Thing, right there. It's not even a joke, it's Man-Thing. Who doesn't Guys, love a good Man-Thing? Come on. This comic book is $2,500. Or it could be to you. Or it could be to you. Today we have for three dollars. This is number eight newsstand. Only one copy. Number eight newsstand. If you love Orion women, watch Lower Decks. Not even a joke. Not even funny. Lower Decks. Is Lower, Lower, Decks. Is Lower Decks is so good. Lower Decks. Is Devon so Attendee is an Orion character, one of the main four characters. And when I say that Star Trek Lower Decks actually goes into the Orion as an alien species more than any other Star Trek show at all. If you like Orions, seriously, uh, Lower Decks. Becky wants eight newsstand. How about nine newsstand? I can't fight her anymore. She-Hulk is taking over. Nine newsstand right here. We only have a couple more minutes before we have a, do our giveaway. I can't imagine why people prefer Savage She-Hulk to like a boring lady lawyer. Nobody cares about that. That would be great. Preston, I don't think we have any blanks left though, so you know. Uh, Orion, Green Lantern Ring. That would be what? Who did that? Was ITW? Wait, that? listen. Her name is Jade, and she's a DC Comics character. Yeah, Susan she's, Oliver she's, played. She's Alan um, Scott's daughter. Susan yeah. Oliver was an Orion. Uh, Wanda Carlo was an Orion. Becky, I got you. Um, how about Savage She Hulk number 10? Give up, She Hulk. You cannot defeat the followers of the bird. I mean, the word. Sorry, the bird is the word. So I get those two mixed up. Right here. Three dollars on this one. Number ten. Uh three dollars on number eleven. She Hulk is dying. Newsstand direct for ten. Newsstand direct newsstand direct for eleven. Right here. Becky wants ten. Um, so newsstand or direct for number 11 on this one. Uh, number 12 is a newsstand right here for $3. Number 12 is a newsstand for $3 right here. Becky, I got you there. She's playing 10, 11, you know, yeah, I'm sure. You might want to make this quicker for Becky and just find out what she needs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we only have, I'll get these done in like two minutes. We only have like three copies okay. left. <laughs> um, Becky, 13. 12 is a newsstand. 13 is a newsstand. Fourteen is a newsstand. 12, 13, 14 are newsstands, Becky. No 15, no 16. 17, man elephant. 17, man elephant. It's three dollars. First we had the man thing. Now we got the man elephant. What's going on, Marvel? Come on. That's a man. Well, man thing is an established character. Man elephant is. A I ain't star. never heard of man uh, elephant, John. Have you? I, I got you there. We have only two more. We have two more left. Not like that, but if you wanted a guy that's like a guy and an elephant, yeah, man elephant is terrible. Go with like jackaderm or something. You know. Um, <laughs> issue number eighteen, which is direct, the grappler. 18 through grappler and the final one is 22 22 radius each one is three dollars so becky there's an eight a 17 18 22 three dollars cj you are you are absolutely correct the direct edition on these books are a lot more scarce a lot more rare marvel started in 1979 with dazzler number one the first direct edition and that was the first direct market so new stands are very predominant this time the directs are the harder to get. Um, but yes, we have 17, 18, and 22, 22, Becky, right there. Guys, this is your final chance uh, to do hashtag EXP. Sorry, A-L-E-X-P. Hashtag A-L-E-X-P. Um, we're we're going to do the drawing in a second. I uh, want to make sure everyone can enter in all lowercase. We're giving away right here. This is Timeless. Uh, New Mutants 13. Um, right here. One final call for She-Hulk. Becky, we have 17, 18, and 22. That's a man-colossus cover. 
Okay. It's a man, Colossus. Colossus man. Right here. The Colossal so, man. We hit 56. Guys, if you guys, if, uh, if you want to run the uh, giveaway. <laughs> That's right. Right here. And we'll give this book away right now. We'll give the book away. Robbie, let people know, uh, school these fools, what's coming up next for you? Cats. That's what's, that's what's coming up next, brother. Cats. 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 I'm I'm sorry, I can't say I'm excited. I, it's, if you guys want to see six grown-ass men in pain, watch our Cats movie review. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to pour myself a little bit of uh, Applejack I picked up in Lancaster, PA, and I'm going to watch that. <laughs> Becky, the pickup's there. Guys, we're going to run the giveaway. Let's do it. Who wants a free book? You have 10 seconds. Hashtag A-L-E-F-T. Then we'll need Jay to let us know what's coming up next. We're going to be taking a break, and then at 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central, we're going to have the Devil's Advocates with Bronze Age Nerd and Kyle, and they're going to be doing kind of like a uh, comic book Mythbusters Q&A kind of segment. Oh, very, that's actually cool. That sounds very cool. Woohoo! All right. Well, with that, we got we got we got comic books. You got a hashtag. Uh if you want to spin the wheel. Fill out, fill out the form. If you haven't filled out the form, we need that information. No fooling there, no fooling. Um, and then let's uh spin, spin, spin. Who will win? Good luck, everybody. Yeah, good go. luck, everybody with Alex. Alex P. Al experience. And winner is. Uh, Canadian hey. Survivalist. Congratulations. Congratulations. Survivalist. The man elephant himself. Hey. Canadian. I still think they should have went with Jackaderm. <laughs> in the in the recent <laughs> Spider Boy book, there's a like a cross between an, an elephant and a rhino, and they literally call it the Helifino. And I'm like, that's hilarious. That's great. You know what? That's exactly the kind of thing I need to see more of. That sounds like something Robert Kirkman would do in year one of Invincible. Yeah, right. Or on uh, what's that super dinosaur book that he did? I love. Oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So guys, don't get to fill out the forms. Make sure you hit the thumbs up down below. If you're not following Robbie on his channel, follow Robbie. I shame on you if us, you're not. Yeah, if you don't follow us on our channel, <laughs> how did you find us in the first place? But make sure you follow us. So hit the hit the thumbs up there. Um, go back to the, the last five EXP and Robbie videos and hit thumbs up on all those videos too. <laughs> yeah, why not? good idea. Actually, um, last five, ten. Why not? Last ten. But seriously, guys, if you fill out, if you want a book or you claim something, please fill yeah, out the form. Sure we have your we have the information. Back. No fooling. And actually, this is actually very important. Ready? Yesterday, he should have cut the feed right no, there. No. When he said, this is very <laughs> Today is April Fool's Day. This is, a, this is a general PSA for everybody everywhere. Today is April Fool's Day. Yesterday, March um, 31st, mm -hmm. is National Data Backup Day. Okay, it's not a joke. Is your data backed up? Like, if your phone crashes or your computer crashes, if your, if your hard drive crashes, is your data saved? Every, I don't have any data that's valuable. Your, fo your, your photos, your videos. What does that have to whatever? do with Easter? <laughs> April Fool's Day. <laughs> don't lose your data. And people mess things up. So back you back your stuff up. Anyway, stick around for the XP tonight at 1030. Thanks we'll see for you guys joining soon. us, everybody. Congratulations, people who bought books, won books. Thank you, Robbie. Check him out. Uh, having his second favorite show of the season. Everything else will tie for first. 1030s, Bronze Age Nerds, and Kyle. Jay, thanks for pushing all the buttons. Uh, Bye, whoever everyone. replaces Alex will be here Wednesday. Yep. See you guys. Join the party. Head over to our link tree to find all the links for everywhere the experience is all the time. Mm -hmm.